Let us, uh, before we get started, uh, the star of the film, Michael Pena, is here. We'd like to say a few words. <laughs> Chicago's own, actually. Hey, guys, thank you so much. I was born and raised in Chicago, so um, yeah. it's awesome. I'm like, this is the first time that I've ever been in this theater. And, uh, you know, I, I actually was... Yeah, I'm from like 16th in California, which is, isn't too far, <laughs> to be honest. I, I went to the one on, on Cermak, um, and in my life, like, you know, because we grew up in, you know, it wasn't the, the richest area or whatever, but every Sunday, you know, my mom would take us to the theater and to watch two or three movies and just stay at the theater and just eat popcorn, and that's when I fell in love with movies, and it was here in Chicago, so that's why I'm really glad that you guys are here to share this. Um, this is a thing. Thank you. Um, first of all, like I really enjoyed this script, and it's you know, and I enjoy anything that's a little bit outside the box. John Michael McDonough is a brilliant writer, um, and his references, like you guys are gonna have to keep tabs to see if you can actually keep up with all the references. Um, but he's just a brilliant writer, and so is his brother. And it was just I, I've never read a script like this. And uh, the way he toys around with subjects is just something that I thought was really amazing and refreshing because I haven't done a movie like this. I think I did Ant-Man, and then I did this. <laughs> it was a little bit of a different creature altogether. Um, but with that in mind, I hope you guys ap uh, appreciate and like this, uh, like the movie. Thank you much. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be back for a Q&A after the film, so please enjoy. What did you think? It was pretty great, great right? Yeah. That was great. Let's bring Michael Pena back out. Hey. Sorry about being late. It was my fault. I actually uh, got some Giordano's pizza. <laughs> and I'm not lying. I'm going to sit like this, this just so that you guys can't see my belly. <laughs> so. Let's just start with the, the with your with your writer director. What, were you a fan of his before you signed on to do this? Or? No, I, I didn't really know about him. I knew about his brother because he wrote *In Bruges*, and I thought that was a, a fantastic movie. Right. And I thought, well, if he writes anything like his brother, it's got to be amazing. And then I was sent to *Calvary*, and I was sent to *Guard*, and uh, Gleason was he's so good in those movies. And uh, I read the script, and I, I was in awe of that number one that he would have the balls to write that kind of stuff. <laughs> like, who starts off a movie with running over a line? <laughs> Genius. Yeah. Well, everybody wants to, but they can't have the guts to. Dude, yeah. you had me at <laughs> uh, So what did you, I mean, what did you, you played law enforcement people before in other movies. Uh, yeah. Uh, probably best, for, like, at your best at, like, end of watch or something like that, but, um, but even we were just talking on the way in about you were on the shield for a while and playing it. Uh, yeah. So that was more of a job. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But and the watch was something that I totally, um, you know, I, I dug in. We rehearsed for like five months. I did a lot of research. And normally you don't have that kind of time. You know what I mean? Now it's like trying to get one month is, I mean, that's a lot of time. And you and Jake Gyllenhaal just yeah, you just dug in. On I that you know one. Yeah. it's one of those things where you actually I actually thought that I was a cop for some reason, <laughs> and, uh, without a badge and a gun, yeah. which it doesn't work that well. <laughs> so what so what what was different about? I mean we know what was different, but you tell us when you read that screenplay, what was different about this one? What Basically was... throwing away everything that I knew and learned from End of Watch to do this movie. <laughs> it really is a polar opposite. It really is, but like, I, in, instead of that, I'm like, I, I, I thought of this story as like, as like, you know, him and his best friend, you know what I mean? They both kind of need each other, you know what I mean? It's a, like a, it's like a love story in a way where, you know, he comes to my, you know, my family and, uh, you know, my best friend with my, you know, my best friend's mom also, like, I, I, I was shacking up with them for a long time and I'm like, so I could, you know, I knew how that is how that was, and he was more than welcome, so it was kind of like helping my buddy and making sure that he doesn't lose his marbles. Um, and so that, that was at the, at the core, that, that was the story for me, which is completely different than it was for End of Watch. Um, but then the way that my guy justified all his actions was that, yeah, he was a cop, 
Yeah, he knew he was a bad cop. Yeah, he was a dirty cop. But these guys are worse. And uh, so that's that's the way that I just, um, you know, that I justified all the stuff that I did, you know, is that, you know, these guys are, and at the end, you know, what they were doing to, to kids and, you know, how they were exposing women, um, it, it just, you know, it, it took it over the edge and justified everything. I don't, I don't think there's, there were, almost every performance in this film was a shock to me, that they, that these people, maybe, maybe you less than anyone else, but that these people were capable of these kind of performances. Leo James, who I've only ever seen in those Divergent movies, I couldn't even believe how, and how, it's Alexander Skarsgård, same deal, it's Tess. so, it's so Tess like, really yeah, good. yeah, she is too. Um, it, it was that, was that kind of cool? She has a nice butt. Like, <laughs> right. We got that going, like now, you know, if there's, um, you brag about it, I guess. Well, she, I mean, yeah, you guys saw her in Creed or whatever, but... You didn't um, see her butt in Creed. No, that's true. <laughs> um, but... Uh, that should be the, the poster. That's what should be. This is what you did. You didn't see her butt in Creed doing this movie. I think she's in the new Thor movie, too. She just got cast in that, too, right? You don't see her butt in that one either? Oh, we don't know that. We don't know that. Um, so, but anyway, just like, was it kind of cool just to sort of subvert expectations a little bit of, like... Well, a what a cop movie is, and just be what everyone you know, not falling into a kind of role that you guys usually do. Is that yeah, I mean, I think, but that's that's more. I think, you know, John Michael Madonna's stick. You know, he like if this movie wasn't War on Everyone, it would probably be called Fuck Everyone, <laughs> um, because he just did, he didn't care about the rules, um, and he wasn't trying to give any kind of message. You know, he was trying to entertain, and it's more for like you know. You know, movie buffs and film goers. You know, the, the, that's that's the audience that he likes. And uh, you know, when we you know premiered it in in, uh, in England and you know Europe, they loved it. They 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 thought that it was great fun. But uh, you know, I remember that some American audiences might might think that it's you know it cuts a little too deep. Well, I was going to ask, like in this day and age, I because I remember when I saw the South by Southwest and just read the description, like this is about like bad cops. I don't know how this is going to play. And then, like today, but I mean, the audience was going crazy for it. Yeah, I mean, like running over a mime kind of buys you a lot of. <laughs> You're like, okay, it's that kind of movie. We will give at least a half an hour yeah. before we can. Did you see what they did to that mime? Um, You're no Marcel Marcel. Exactly. Uh, just, just that's so probably the worst. That's probably worse than running them over. <laughs> that's right. It's insulting. Is uh, just so you guys know, I'm gonna ask a couple more questions, but we're gonna have we're set up a mic over here in the aisle. So if you have any questions. Just, you can line up over there once that happens. Um, and the watch shirt, nice, dude. Oh my gosh, yeah, look at that. Um, if I'm in Star Wars, that's all over, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what, um, what do you remember about, about your character when it's sort of latching onto initially? Um, yeah, what I loved the absolute most was learning about all these different people because it, you know, it's one thing to, to, you know, I can tell when actors don't know what they're talking about. And, uh, and you know, he's bringing up all these people like, uh, you know, Simone de Beauvoir, and the, the feminist. And, and so I was, you know, I, I really tried to know who these people were so that I can talk to them and just share and, and try to, you know, understand. And this is the way that a cop actually talks because, he, you know, he reads a lot. And uh, I, I just loved, you know, rehearsing. And uh, it, but it was a, it was a pretty big challenge in order for me to, to you know to be natural with that kind of thing as opposed to just regurgitating something by rote. Did did you? I mean, there's almost a shorthand going on with you and Alex. Um, did, did, I mean, you guys talk a lot, but it, there also seems to be like an unspoken thing going on too. Did you get to spend some time with him before you started? No shooting? time. None. None. No rehearsals or anything. What happened was that there was someone else that was supposed to do the movie. You guys can do your research. Um, his part or your part? <laughs> or, or, oh, that would have been amazing if it was my part. Oh, okay, his part. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would have brought that up. Right, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they felt ill somehow, and I got the part. Um, Eric is trying. <laughs> no, um, well, I was attached to it for about a year, okay, okay. and it's one of those movies like like a crash or end of watch or you know, for me, um, you know, like you know the Twin Towers, um, you know those kind of movies where you just call all the time and you you want to be a part of something, 
that you think is just cool, you know, like, you, you know, some, some of these movies are, you know, do well and don't do well, and it, like, if, um, but uh, you just really love the experience of, of filming and, you know, your, your co-stars or whatnot. But I was, so I was, you know, for a year I was, you know, on pins and needles, like, whether, you know, I didn't know if it was going to happen or not. And then the guy that I was supposed to do that movie with dropped out, I think a week before we were filming. So that's when um, Skarsgård, uh, he would tell you the story, but he, you know, he's, he's, he lives in New York now. He was done with L.A. I'm done, dude. Totally done. <laughs> Fucking awful. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because that's, that's how he, <laughs> yeah, but no matter what, my girl thinks he's like super hot. So like, <laughs> they don't get to talk very often. Tarzan, man, come on. Yeah, no, but uh, but anyway, so so he comes in literally uh, with a week of prep. You know, he he goes to New York and he's supposed to read this. You know, the script. And he's like, ah, whatever. I'll just take a peek at it. Ten pages in, he's like, oh shit. He has to come right back to L.A. And, uh, and, you know, meet with uh, John Michael McDonough, and then he says he's in, and, uh, and then a week later we're filming. Wow. Well, that's great. All right. All right. Who has some, who has some questions from up there? You all stayed. I know you've got to be something. Oh, here we go. There you Sibilance. Go. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, buddy. Um, yeah, you and Alex had great on-screen chemistry, I thought. Um, were you guys able to do any improv, or was this all straight scripted? Yeah, there was there's a bunch of improv in there, uh, but th the thing is, is I'm like, I, yeah, I don't like to improv just to improv. You know, hopefully, like it, it seems like you know, there's like spontaneous or whatnot. But uh, what I do is I, what any little town that I go to, I always hire like actors, like local actors from regional theater, or whatever, just to rehearse. Because, um, you know, if you rehearse six hours a day, and no friend is going to want to do that. Not for free. So I'm like, I'll pay these people like 20 bucks an hour. And then there's usually like alts that keep coming up, like instincts that keep coming up. And I just write them down and uh, so that they're part of the movie. Um, and it's not like you're rewriting them. It might be like, you know, some kind of behavior or just, you know, a thought that isn't quite crystallized that you keep rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing. And, uh, and, you know, you just, instead of asking, a, what I've learned is that you don't ask a director if he think, what does he think about this line? Because he'll say no. <laughs> and so you just do it. You know, first, like, first you do what, you know, what they have, what the studio likes, you know, with the investors, or, you know, because they're all nervous, they, you know, put a lot of millions of dollars in this. But then you try your stuff. And then if there's no reaction, then you say, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and if they're laughing, you're like, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, did you like? This is really like. This is really dark. The movie was really lighthearted. Um, what do you? But it, I got to admit, an element kind of worried me. Like, what do you? What do you think it says that that kind of '70s feeling of kind of kind of not even bothering to make it better? Fuck the system. Fuck everyone. <coughs> their movie basically says. Um, does it make it hard to be op optimistic in your normal life that that seems to be coming back in movies? Love it, but it is rather worrisome. Um, I don't quite understand the question. Like, that, that, that that's an ongoing theme with some movies? I haven't seen a lot of movies like this. Ah. Well, did, did you have, did you, do you feel op optimistic personally, or did you have to, like, was it real lighthearted on set, or did you have to... Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, I'm always kind of kidding around, trying to keep it light, you know? I, it's something that I read. We were just talking before, I'm like, I went to a bookstore right by Belmont about 21 years ago, the Sanford Meisner book, and, uh, you know, somewhere in there it said, you know, to, to be loose and, or, or whatnot, like on stage, and even though I've never done stage, I think it's important to, to, to keep loose. I think, um, you know, like, I mean, this is getting like, a little too technical, but I think you're, you're you're, you have more grasp of your emotions and you can easily get to different places if you're loose. But if you're tight, you can't really do anything. Um, so that's, I, you know, I, the only thing that I don't want to do is get, you know, is be fooling around when somebody's like busy trying to cry and think of their mother dying, roasting or something like that, you know? You don't want to be telling fart jokes at that point, you know? Um, but it was, it was really loose. There's, there's some movies like, for instance, that you just can't do that. Um, like Fury, for instance. 
Um, it was like we were in a tank for five months and it was depressing and we just kind of just kept it there and, and whenever we were trying to liven it up, it was, it was kind of melancholy and sad anyway, which kind of you know, ended up in the movie. So dramas are way more depressing than like action, I take it? I think comedies are more depressing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I gotta ask why. Why not? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, it's, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's interesting, but like, you know, you do movies with some, like, I, I, I still think that this is, you know, like half drama, half comedy. But there's a lot of comedians, which I won't say their names, but they're dark, you know? And I'm like, it's like, I don't want to be anybody's fucking clown, man. I was like, but you're making people laugh, which is a good thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I met a lot of dark people and a lot of them were comedians for sure. Thank you. There you go. Uh, we have time for a couple more. If there's... Oh, come on, guys. It's fine with me. Don't like worry about it. We got it's one. It's not fine with me. We got somebody coming here. Oh, there we go. Hello. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like you bring a lot of your personal experiences into the uh, performances that you do. And I was thinking, are you interested in like a biop? biopic movie or something like a sci-fi down the stretch and are you going to be involved with Ant-Man 2? Um, man, that's a lot. So, Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's like a long menu. You're okay with those. Um, I, uh, I would like to get into, like I do have one in the works, um, playing a Chicago cop. Um, there's, I actually uh, am producing two biopics um, one about a deaf football player from Oklahoma City, um, and another one is, uh, you know, what does it take to be a made man, um, you know, in the, in the 40s, uh, in Los Angeles. Um, so, yeah, and I also I want to, you know, I, I would love to, to, to do something. Um, I, I, I like Cesar Chavez, I'm like, if it was a slightly more, if we had a little bit more money, we could have, could have done more things in that movie, but it's, uh, so I kind of would like another crack at uh, something like that. Um, I will be in Ant-Man 2. Uh, it, was, it was announced, so it's not a, you know. Let's say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was announced. So I'm not, <laughs> there's no red dot on my head. <laughs> they will kill you. With, with, the, with the, tr the trio, like, David? I was Dust almost afraid that it was like, Michael. No, no, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> no, like David Dustmanson had this film, Animals, here a couple years ago. Oh, so right he was, on. He's from Chicago, too. And, yeah. Uh, so I assume the trio is back, like the trio of... See, that I don't know. No, like, okay. I, you know, to what, I hope that I, you know, you talk to those guys, you talk to those guys, and at the end of the day, we're like, yeah, we don't really need Michael. <laughs> you know, that would suck. But right now, I'm, I'm still part of, okay. a part of that world. I actually thought, you know, it would be really cool if I was bugging him for a suit the entire time. <laughs> and, and what if I came back super buff? And it's like, Luis, what happened? He was like, I'm just working out, man. <laughs> so, uh, be ready to save the world, you know? <laughs> I thought that, that would be really cool. And then maybe at the end, this is what I pitched, uh, which is never gonna go. And then maybe at the end, this is what you have when you have a lot of time to trailer. Uh, <laughs> at the end, they do give me a, a suit, but it has very limited powers. <laughs> like you can slide. <laughs> the somersault. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, what we don't know is that, Mike, uh, that uh, Michael's going to be playing the wasp in the, in the wasp. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. Uh, anyone else? Maybe one more. Let's oh, give it one a more. Game. All right, here we go. Um, I just have like a general question. Uh, you know, like you do drama so well, but you're, uh, you know, you're very funny in this, and uh, I thought you were very funny in Observe and Report. Oh, right which on. Which is such a fucking great movie, but uh, Thank you. Do, I you, um, do you have a hard time like, deciding whether to do comedy or drama? Um, it's not really, because there's not a, like a bunch of comedies that I really love, to be honest with you. I read it, and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, you know, like... Uh, you know, most of the romantic comedies that I read even, I'm like, there's no way I can do that. Like, I'm, I'm not the Mexican Brad Pitt. <laughs> like, I know what I'm working with, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a solid six, <laughs> you know? 
with the acting thing, maybe you could bump it up to like some eight, depending on foreign territory. You look good in a suit here, though. Thanks a lot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, but it's it's easier to do, um, you know, comedies that I think are funny. Like those are like, oh, I gotta do those. And I just I just stay away from the ones where I don't know, you know, how it's gonna work or I don't know, you know, their angle. And usually in the meeting or whatever, we're, we can both tell we're like, yeah, it's probably not good. Um, but dramas, it's because I've I've done I think thirty maybe even 40 movies that are like dramas and, and TV shows as well. And um, I've done, I think, like four comedies. So it's, it's kind, of, kind of easy to pick, I guess. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for coming to Chicago. Back to Chicago and talking to the movie. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, I think it's in October, sorry, I should know that. Uh, yeah, because it's probably in the fall, so you have a lot of time to tell people to go see it when it comes out. Uh, we got to clear the theater right away because the next film is in like 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, so let's move it out to the lobby. Uh, and again, thank you, Mike, so much. Thank you, guys.